Hello, this is Steve Mann from Paper Classroom and I'd like to uh, welcome you to our unit on the sheet formation for board. In this unit, the questions we'll be addressing are what actually is board? How do we define board? How can we produce a multi-layer product? What do we mean by the terms liner, backs and middles? And how do all these layers stick together? Okay, so let's start with what is board? Well, in the paper industry, we've got a few things, haven't we? We have tissue, we have paper, and we have board. Tissue is a, a lightweight material. We normally define this as being less than 25 grams per square meter, although some people uh, extend this to up to about 40 grams per square meter. Paper is anywhere above that, up to about 225 grams per square meter. And the general definition for board is anything larger than 225 grams per square meter. That's how we define it in the UK. In other countries, there are uh, an, there's another grade that they call paperboard. And paperboard is somewhere between 150 and 600 grams per square meter. Okay, so let's let's look at board now, and um, we've said it's a heavyweight material, over 225 grams per square meter. It's also a solid material, so we must differentiate between board that we're talking about today and corrugated board. Corrugated board, of course, is more of a, a hollow material. So, how do we make board? We're making really just a very thick sheet of paper so not unexpectedly we use very similar pieces of equipment here you'll see my schematic of a very simple Ford Rainier. we have one floor box here we have the paper making wire on this particular uh, operation we have a second floor box there and we call this secondary floor box or secondary head box so you get in two sheets produce one on top of another along a single wire. Almost the same but not quite is to use a strategy of having what we call a stratified head box. So internally inside the head box or the floor box it's divided into two or three or even more compartments and you can have a different flow of stock going into each one. Now the stock might be different insofar as it might be mechanical fibre or recycled fibre or virgin fibre or it might be different in terms of fibre length. It's not uncommon if you want to produce a stiff material to have very short fibres in the middle ply and long fibres in the outer plies. If you're a tissue manufacturer however then you do it the other way around. The most important thing for the tissue people is softness. So you may have small fibres on the outside and long fibres on the inside. But for board, we're just concerned with having really three layers giving us the final property that we want. Okay, these are essentially for drinier based configurations, but that's not the only way of doing these things. Another way is to use a set of VAT machines. Remember we talked about VAT machines in the history of paper making modules. So here, for example, we've got five vats. I've made them all different colours to represent different furnishes. This line here is the paper making felt. So the felt comes round in this way. This vat circle will go around in the clockwise direction. to pick up fibres, come here, deposit them on the felt itself. When it gets to this point, this will pick up the red fibres and deposit them on the layer of green fibre that's already present. The blue fibres will go on the red, etc. until eventually, in this case, you get a five layer board. And there you can see a little magnification of the five layers. So the green fibre was the first one that was in contact with the felt itself. The yellow layer was the last one. And some of these board machines that produce board in this way using vats use nine, maybe more different types of, uh, of 
well, nine different furnishes. Another way is like you see here. There we have a traditional foid rainier stuck coming out of the head box represented by this red fibre. What you may have there is another foid rainier type here. Single floor box, single wire, that's coming down there. Single floor box, single fabric coming down here. And here we've got a floor box sending out stock but we have a twin wire system here maybe this is a very wet fiber maybe it's a recycled fiber so the stock will come out of here it'll be dewatered top and bottom come down there where it will meet the stock from this one the two sheets will then come down there so the purple sheet will be on top of the red one the yellow will become the top side and then the fourth sheet will come on there so there's an example of making a four ply board Okay, so nomenclature. What do we mean by backs, middles, liner? Well, here's a box just as an example. <clears throat> These represent the uh, focus modules that we teach. If you look at a typical box, you've got a nice printed surface on the outside. You have a less relevant surface on the inside. People are usually much less bothered about the inside of a box than they are about the outside of a box. So, the inside of the box we refer to as the backs. That's the back side that no one is really interested in. The top surface, that's the one that's presented to the public. So that needs to be good. Usually people want to print on it. So it needs to be very good quality for printing. And therefore, we often refer to this as the liner or the top liner. And beneath that, you may have an underliner. These may be uh, bleached virgin fibre sheets to give a nice white surface to take a nice white pigmented coating. And of course, if you have the backs at one side and you have the liners at the opposite side, then in between you'll have the middles. And the middles could be any of many different types of fiber. They might be mechanical fibers if you're going to try to make it stiff. They may be recycled fibers if you're trying to be ecologically friendly. And because they're in the middle, then they don't necessarily have to be bleach fibers. They could be very uh, brown mechanical fibers with all the lignin that's there unbleached. They could be grey recycled fibres with the ink still there. So that's the structure of board and that's the nomenclature. So back when it's eventually folded it will become the inside of a box. The liner when it's folded will become the outside of the box. So for there you need good presentation. And in the middle are the middles. And those are the fibres that give you either say, stiffness or ecological acceptability. The last thing I said we want to talk about was how do these things stick together, all these different plies. So I've given you just a very simple illustration here for a two-ply sheet. So we have the Fordrinia producing with a floor box here producing one sheet, another little Fordrinia there with another type of uh, fibre producing a second sheet. And this comes down here and then the two sheets come together and you've got a very simple two ply board well two of the main variables that will dictate how well these things bond together is the shopper regler value the closer the furnishes are in shopper regler value then the more likely you are to get a good bond the further apart they are in shopper regler values the poorer will be the bond the same applies to the consistency of the stock. The nearer the two consistencies are to each other, then the better bond you will get formed. And of course, if all else fails, as a, as a help or an insurance, you can always squirt a bit of starch into this nip here as the two plies come together to glue it together. 
Now, final thing before I go is to just ask you, I've got a sheet of paper, it's got two sides. So here's a cross section of a piece of paper. It's got a wire side and it's got a top side. Here, you see the two papers coming together, top side to top side. Your question is, how many ways are there of putting two sheets together? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. And now I'm going to move on to the final slide and we'll see what the answer is. There we go. There are three ways of putting two plies of paper together. This one here, as you saw, top side to top side. And that always gives the strongest bond. Another way is top side to wire side. And the final way is wire side to wire side and the wire side to wire side gives the weakest bond well that's all i have to say about uh, formation of board i hope you've enjoyed this uh, taster session on board and i look forward to uh, seeing you on one of my formal courses